AI is passed on here and the balance manifesto is out. Um, if you thought that um, only the flask system and um, some support gems, maybe cast on crit changed uh, and you saw the announcement and you haven't really gone through the uh, manifesto yet, uh, prepare yourself because uh, this is the craziest uh, string of nerfs I've ever seen in the eight years I've been playing this game. Um, last time I saw such a huge meta shakeup was when Valpact was nerfed. Uh, if you didn't know, Valpact used to give instant life leech, uh, which basically meant you would only die if you get one shot, otherwise you're immortal. So nowadays, um, stuff like this doesn't really happen, and the Valpact change was actually small in comparison to this. So let's go through all of it, and uh, yeah, let's start at the support gem changes. All right, so this one is interesting because not only do we get uh, a reduction in damage to basically all support gems, so basic, so bringing down the power of pretty much every build. Um, but we also have some specific ones that we will go into. Um, as for now, what they state here is that gems that provide a useful benefit in addition to damage usually grants less than 25% more damage at gem level 20. Probably something like Inspiration would fall into that, which probably will get nerfed a lot. Those that provide only a damage bonus damage bonus, or only a very mild restriction or penalty grant around 30 to 35% more multiplier. So that's what I would feel like Ellie Focus would fall into maybe, or like Brutality, which would be a crazy decrease. Like from 60% to 30 to 35, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Those with downsides or restrictions grant between 38 to 48% more damage, depending on how severe the cost of using the support is. I don't know what will fall into what, but overall this seems like more like a 40% damage less multiplier for us. Basically every build. So I don't know if Chris uh, was bullshitting us. Um, in the reveal stream, but yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, we got a few examples here. Melee physical damage gets 10% less attack speed. Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine for bleed builds and for slammers. <laughs> slammers, we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's obviously uh, very, very bad. It's kind of like vicious projectiles now in that you get the less attack speed, which will also mean that the build will feel worse, not only deal less damage. Um, and also the minion support gem they listed here, which now gives 25% less life to the minions, which sounds pretty rough, but I'm no minion expert. I just hear from people that this is a pretty big one. But to get into the meat here, we have an actual buff here with increased critical damage support. This um, gave us 103 critical strike multiplier before. It's now 138. Um, note that this is without quality. So with quality, it's going to be over 150. Which might be fine um, if crit didn't get destroyed further down, but we will talk about that in a second. And Archmage got completely destroyed. Um, so now it supported skills gain added lightning damage equal to 60% of mana cost, which used to be 106, so almost cut in half. But it gets even worse because supported skills have a base mana cost equal to 5% instead of 6% of unreserved mana. So Archmage supports got pretty gutted. Now, there is a new skill, a lightning skill, uh, which is called Mana Bond, uh, which will work with mana, so we don't really know how that works yet. Uh, but just randomly supporting any skill with Archmage now seems a lot less desirable. So next up, real quick, uh, Slams. So um, they buff Ground Slam. That's awesome, right? I mean, it used to be 150% base damage, now it's 188%. That's a buff, right? Um... Well, let's look what they did with Seismic Cry here, right? Can't be that bad. We have changed Seismic Cry to no longer provide more damage to exerted attacks. Warcry empowered slams were incredibly powerful, true, as slams received a damage bonus from Seismic Cry that non-slam melee skills didn't have access to. So let's see how it got nerfed. Where's the damage bonus? Oh, it got completely removed. Okay, so Seismic Cry, uh, for people who haven't uh, played Warcrys yet, um, probably doubled your damage if you stacked your Warcrys correctly. So it probably goes from like 70% more damage to 110% more damage if timed correctly. Um, so yeah, uh, on top of all the support damage changes, um, slam skills basically got, their damage got reduced in half. Let's just put it that way. But let's move on from slams to the Flask rework because um, they already revealed a lot of it. But 
some of the utility flasks that we came to love over the years, like Quicksilver Flask and Diamond Flask, weren't revealed on the reveal stream with Chris. I wonder why that is. So let's look over what they did with that. The flask rebalance has mostly affected utility flasks. Some of them have been reworked. The most notable change that hasn't been announced yet is to the Diamond Flask. It previously granted your critical strikes are lucky. The single effect provided a massive damage boost to your critical strikes more than any other source in the game. Because flasks no longer provide that, that much power, it has been changed to provide 100% increased critical strike chance instead. Um, so what you're reading here is basically every every single crit build that didn't have like 90% crit without diamond flask, so an out, outlier builds, um, basically got their damage reduced by another 20%. So um, this is a big, big, big issue because probably almost all crit builds try to get to like 50% crit, maybe 60% crit, and then get the most out of a diamond flask. Whereas now they do not have this lucky effect anymore. Lucky is basically uh, roll the crit, the crit twice, and if it hits once, you get a crit. Now it's really hard to say what this is actually going to do with crit builds because there's still builds out there that can get an absurd amount um, of crit chance, and they will basically not get hit as much as all the builds that have like 40 to 50 percent crit and that just kind of lived off of this diamond flask. And if you put away the diamond flask all of a sudden you might as well go elemental overload and not scale any crit multi at all. So for those builds, it's kind of weird. They're in a very weird spot, I feel like. Um, there is still some ways to get um, to get critical strikes or lucky, but they are very, very hard um, to actually get into your build. So I don't know how this is going to pan out, but just know that uh, Diamond Flask, 100% increased crit chance is absolutely abysmal. Um, I don't think this flask will be used for basically anything. They also buffed stuff like Ruby, Topaz, Sapphire flasks by a tiny amount, um, which is fine, I guess. Uh, this is kind of a meme. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's uh, it's not even worth talking about, in my opinion. Um, now, they have in, uh, added some uh, flask clusters to the passive tree, which um, are fine. You can do some, some cool stuff, like they said, they won't be um, nerfing Dying Sun, which is cool. And now with some more work, you can actually double the amounts of uh, arrows you get with a lot of flask effect from the Dying Sun. But remember that um, all flasks will have a lot less uptime. So unless you're only bossing, it might be a little bit hard to actually keep that up. Uh, now, the biggest nerf is here at the end, um, at least in my opinion. The Adrenaline modifier on flasks now gives far less movement speed. 6 to 8%, uh, down from 20 to 30. So that means that every, or let's say, let's say 95% of builds in this game just got 22% reduced movement speed. Um, that's kind of big, especially since we will go over the movement speed section, where you will see that we, actually almost every build got hit a lot more than just these 22% movement speed. Um, so yeah, basically every build will be uh, a lot slower, and um, the game will look quite a bit different after this patch, most likely. So next up is the player ailment mitigation section. Um, so here they talk about that it was too easy to completely ignore ignites, shocks, freezes, and chills. So they wanted to kind of um, make that a little bit more relevant uh, by um, removing all the immunities from flasks. You now actually have to remove every single ignite and shock that gets applied to you. Um, personally, I'm a little bit cynical when it comes to this. I don't see PoE as the kind of game where you can actually see when you're ignited or you can see where you're, when you're shocked and actually react to that. But maybe I'm just bad. I don't know. Um, I don't really, I don't really understand how they want to do this. And there is a new f flask um, enchantment that they released that basically makes it so you can um, tune a flask to where it gets. For example, if you have an anti-ignite flask, it gets activated whenever you get ignited. So you get ignited, you remove it again immediately, and so on. My only question or my concern here is that what happens if like 10 enemies hit you at once or like in, in, in small increments and they all ignite you? Is, is your flask just going to go down like this? Or what about like small shocks and stuff like that? I don't know how that's going to play out. I hope they thought about that. I would assume they thought about that, um, but let's move on. 
So next up, I kind of thought this was coming. Uh, they are reworking ailment mitigation. So they will take away the um, Raider ailment immunity and they make it 50% chance to avoid elemental ailments uh, instead while phasing instead of being 100% um, uh, immune to it. Uh, which I think is still okay. Like, I think Raider got away pretty good here. You can still... We'll have to see what they change about ailment immunity on items and uh, how easy it is to acquire the other 50%. But I think that Raider, all in all, for how much the other ascendancies got gutted, um, actually got away pretty good here. Although there is another Raider change uh, coming. Another Raider nerf, obviously. Um, yeah, so other than Raider, Hierophant and Pathfinder retain some level of ailment mitigation. We'll have to wait for the patch notes for that. But Inquisitor and Elementalist no longer have any at all. I don't know if that gets compensated by anything or if this is straight up an Elementalist and Inquisitor nerf. Um, I don't know. I don't think Inquisitor needed a nerf for Elementalist. I guess they thought it was, uh, it was adequate. So whatever it is, um, we're going to get around this somehow. I'm really, really skeptical what they're doing with the with the flask stuff here, they want us to um, basically not have any mitigation against map curses, which is really bad. Like before you press a flask, you are curse immune throughout that duration. And now you basically cannot remove those anymore because they are global. They're not one-time applications at the start of a map. They go on throughout the map. And now that warding flasks only remove one curse once, that doesn't affect map mods. So that's a crazy change. So now vulnerability, you will basically get one shot. Elemental weakness, you have to overcap your resistances to where elemental weakness doesn't do anything to you or you have to reroll it. So um, temporal chains is basically undoable because you're just going to run around like a snail. Um, I don't know about these flask changes. I'm not too happy with them, but I, I hope they thought about some of these things and uh, we got to see more in the patch notes. Now next up for poison. Um... When I read this line here, poison now inherently deals 50% more damage, my first reaction was, these nerves are going to be huge. Because if they start with this line, they basically want to say like, okay, slow down. We understand this is harsh, but here you have 50% more damage, which they never did. So obviously you know that what's about to come is going to be way worse than these 50% more damage, this 50% this more damage could ever make up. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Because the way GGG usually balances ailments is they never get it 100% right. Uh, what usually happens is they nerf an ailment into the ground, like Ignite, uh, which got kind of reinvigorated, I, th I think in 3.12, was it? And before that, it basically didn't exist for several patches. And they had to buff it by like hundreds of percents over like four or five patches until it got back to playability. That's how rough and how bad they are at nerfing damage over time. So whatever is coming here is really, really rough, and it is. So they basically targeted Assassin, and that's a good observation of them because Assassin was extremely good. Noxious Strikes was just too strong. 5% um, increased poison duration for each poison you have inflicted recently, but now it has a cap up to a maximum of 100%. So that basically means that most builds who used this node lost around 200 to maybe even 500% poison duration alone with this nerf that they gave it a maximum. I don't know what to say about this. Uh, chance to poison on hit is completely useless. They also removed the 30% damage over time multiplier for poison on top of this nerf. Uh, yeah, um, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> Poison players will have to move on to either Occultist or Pathfinder. Oh, wait, it's going to come in a second. But yeah, uh, this node is ridiculously bad now. Uh, it's it's really, really bad. Now, let's go up to the next node, though. Toxic Delivery now has Poison you inflict with Critical Strikes deals 25% more damage from 50%. So you're losing out on around 25% more damage, which is pretty huge. Um, just so you know, uh, uh, Perfect Agony was one of those keystones that are usually used to enhance crits from damage over time. And um, the problem was it wasn't ever really that great. Uh, most of the assassins just used it because it's like 5% more damage at best, but it never really was at a point where you could actually stack crit multi and be happy about it. It never was that strong, unless you're like a claw build or a dagger build, and you could actually um, just get a lot of crit multi for free on the tree. 
but for normal poison builds it perfect agony was never really good so the only reason you had for stacking crit was this node and now that it's not 50 percent more damage on crit anymore but instead it's 25 percent um yeah so in my opinion assassin should not be considered a uh, poison anymore this is uh, one of those gg nerfs that i think um they will have to revisit in three or four leaks uh, because nobody's going to play Assassin now. Uh, most people are going to move on to Occultist. But yeah, it is what it is. Now, moving on to the Coralito Signature nerf. Um, this flask has also been gutted. It's very, very weak now. Um, instead of up to 75% poison duration, it only gives you 30% damage over time multiplier from critical strikes, which, as we talked about, is not even worth going for anymore because they nerfed um, Toxic Delivery up here. So uh, just as Perfect Agony, uh, Coralitos is pretty much not going to be viable anymore. Um, at least I don't see it in my head. Like I've min-maxed so many poison builds that I'm really, really, really sarcastic. I'm really, really cynical when it, when it comes to these changes. I think they were terribly implemented. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion, right? Um, so Paths Finders Master Toxicis Notable has received a smaller nerf now causing poisons you inflict during any flask effect to have a 20% chance to deal 100% more damage down from 30. Um, so small nurse in this patch means that you get 10% less damage straight up. Uh, all right, uh, Pathfinder also got nerfed. It This was like kind of the only really good poison note they had left. So yeah, I don't know. Poison really got it hard. Um, I'm really, really curious why they didn't nerf Occultist as well when they went through all of this, but I'm happy. I think Poison might find a home in Occultists, but um, Pathfinder was already pretty bad and um, gets even worse throughout this. And Assassin is basically uh, non-existence aside of uh, power charge builds. Overall, I think uh, Poison can survive. Um, it, it will just have to adapt, right? Uh, so, for example, before you would just get a a lot of duration and you would scale all this overkill duration with faster poison from um, wasting affliction medium cluster notable for example and now what you will have to do is you have very little amounts of, of uh, poison duration scaling because Coralitos got nerfed and assassin got nerfed so now you will kind of faster poison is kind of dead and you will just stack a little bit duration on your medium cluster jewels and um yeah i think poison will find a way to to exist uh, but it definitely got the nerf hammer here. Let's move on to ailment thresholds. Now, I don't want to go over this too long because we don't have any numbers, but basically what they say is they're reducing the damage of players so by so much that it's going to be harder to apply shock and chill and other non-damaging ailments. So they will basically raise the ailment threshold uh, or, or lower it, basically making it easier to apply those and uh, make it more possible to also shock bosses and shock um, like... Uh, rares and stuff like that high health rares uh, instead of just white mobs which was always the problem with um, shock for example as a damage multiplier it was only good against enemies who had low health which you didn't really care for extra damage for because they would just fall over and now against the targets that it matters shock should be better but as i said i can't really comment much because they haven't given given us any um numbers here next up trigger effect costs this is an interesting one uh, in 3.15, triggering skills through support gems will require paying their mana cost. In fact, sometimes it now costs more than casting the gem by hand. Uh, this does not only affect cast on crit, it also affects cast when damage taken, uh, which is, I think, even harsher because um, I think that most builds had some kind of cast when damage taken set up. Um, if they are operating on very low mana, it could be that you get hit and you cannot pay the mana cost for your guard skills or whatever. So... That could be a very, very weird interaction. Uh, but as for cast on crits, um, it does say down here that spells triggered with Mjolnir, uh, for example, they didn't say cost breeze, but they do not have to pay the mana cost. So I don't really know what to think of that exactly. Um, but I don't think that's too much of an upside because you will still have a cast on crit setup and you will have to pay for that anyways. So you will have to think about your mana regardless. So what I'm saying is I'm not really sure yet what this means. Um, I think it could be fine, actually. There's some new avenues with reap blood charges, I guess. Like you can now support it with Archmage. You can support it with Arcane Surge. Um, 
we'd have to think about that. Maybe there's something to do. But all in all, um, there's now another layer of things that custom crit builds have to think about. And one of the very unfortunate downsides is that um, there's some really, really cool uh, janky cost when damage taken builds out there uh, that have some very cheesy combos where you just run and you cast stuff because you're damaging yourself. And those builds will now have to pay like hundreds of mana per second, which I don't think they will be able to. So yeah, those mean builds will probably be dead. As for cast on crit, they're just so strong that they might as well, they might actually recover from this, uh, but it's going to be very interesting to see. Oh boy. So for this next one, uh, I have to prepare for a second. So smoke mine got deleted. Um, basically what happened is instead of giving you 29% uh, movement speed for five seconds after you activated smoke mine, it's now only for one second. Um, and instead of 2.5 second cooldown, it now has five second cooldown. So the downside of smoke mine, which is it kind of has a delay instead of flame dash, which is instant. Um, no, smoke mine is just, it doesn't exist anymore. So, so smoke mine means that uh, all builds, a lot of builds were using smoke mine, a lot of the better ones, at least. Um, they had with a 21 smoke mine, 30% movement speed. So on top of Quicksilver, which uh, Quicksilver of Adrenaline, which means that now you lose 22% movement speed. On top of that, you lose the smoke mine buff, which is another 30% movement speed, uh, which means 52% movement speed minus for every single build. And that's not even talking about the rest of the movements, uh, movement skills down here. So let's go over those real quick. So Dash's cooldown time is now 2.5 seconds from 2 and has 0 to 19 increased cooldown recovery rate from 0 to 57%. That basically gets around to a point where you can use Dash only half as often as you could before. So you can imagine uh, it's a pretty big nerf to um, a lot of builds that didn't want to use Flame Dash because Dash is just a little bit more comfy. But Flame Dash also got hit, don't worry. Uh, Flame Dash cooldown time now is 3.5 seconds from free and has 0 0.19 cooldown recovery from 0 to 47. Uh, and its cast time is now 0 0.8 seconds. So if you're casting it multiple times in a row, you will feel that as well. Uh, but it doesn't even stop there. It is also second wind changes. Um, second wind support gem has been changed. Now, so the upside of second wind is that you get another charge. But now instead of giving you increased cooldown recovery rate and you would just use it on every single setup, it now reduces your cooldown recovery rate. So going from 30% increased cooldown recovery to 5% reduced. So you're losing another 35% re cooldown recovery from every build, basically. This indirectly nerfs slams again because uh, slam setups also had second wind in their setup. So that's also something to consider. So yeah, builds will be a lot slower than before this patch, uh, unless there's like some cheese mechanic that we're not aware of yet. But as for normal mechanics, like um, Adrenaline Flask, Smoke Mine, um, Dash, Flame Dash, those, those things have been affected a lot. Although things like Whirling Blades or Leap Slam might actually now be your preferred methods of moving around. So maybe it's another attack speed meta where you just stack Whirling Blades uh, you go for an attack skill and you just go for maximum attack speed as you did, I think was like 3.11 and earlier. That was a thing before the first movement speed, um, uh, movement skill rework. So maybe we go back to that. We got to see, but this is very interesting. And um, yeah, uh, leak starts are going to be a lot slower. So they also nerfed Arcane Surge, which I'm not really too surprised by. Uh, they re removed its cast speed, which is unfortunate. It still has the more spell damage multiplier. Um, but it also lost the percentage recovery, which was huge for Archmage builds. And it now just grants percentage mana regeneration, which is not multiplicative. So yeah, it's better early game as they state here with clarity, but it doesn't really matter. At higher levels, it has been um, cut back quite a lot. Fortify effect, they go over real quickly. We get no numbers. Um, just that Fortify effect will be nerfed across the board. Fortify effect was extremely strong, so I understand that nerf. So as for Veiled Mods, Veiled Mod changes are very interesting. Basically, what they made here is that it's a lot more expensive now to craft good gear because uh, what you did before is you just got an item with four stats and then you 
uh, veiled on a fifth modifier, and then you crafted the last one. Done. Now you can't really do that anymore, but you also can at the same time. So veiled modifiers no longer count as crafted modifiers, which means that you can now block certain stats uh, from being revealed by that veiled modifier. Before, if you had a craft on your weapon or, or your, your item, you had to remove it before you could put a veil on, right? So now you can, for example, put on strength, and now you can still put a veil on, and that veil cannot be strength-related, which is interesting. Um, but so, so here is the change, right? Icelings Crafting Bench that adds a Veiled Modifier now first removes a random modifier. So it is riskier to use as a later step of item crafting rather than being an obvious final step because of its very consistent modifier pool. Makes complete sense, but here's the thing. You can still circumvent this with some methods. For example, you already crafted your, your suffixes and you basically got one good prefix that you want with Harvest. Then you can still meta craft because now you can craft your metacraft suffixes cannot be changed, and you still do the Veiled mod. And if you hit the mod that you want, then whoopsie, you have to do it again. But if you hit the suffixes cannot be changed, it is just as it was before. So there's still some ways to circumvent this, but for a lot of crafting methods, this will be rough. So for a lot of builds, like, like I said, as of this nerf, it's just a small nerf. But for a lot of builds, this will just mean straight up 10% less damage or something because you cannot craft high-end uh, stuff anymore. So then there's some other smaller uh, nerfs. I'm just going to go uh, over it real quickly because some of them are pretty much nothing burgers. But um, Elementalist got completely destroyed. Um, Elementalist's uh, Golem Stacker is now basically a meme. Uh, it doesn't stack anymore. The buff effect doesn't stack anymore per golem. It's just 100%. Um, and it can't go higher at all. So, yeah. Um, golem stacking is not worth it anymore. Um, they intended to make it so you can use this with less golems as well. So you don't have to stack as many. You don't feel forced to stack as many. Which is just another way of saying that now you just don't use it at all. Because that was the only use case that you would actually take the golem nodes from elementalist so that's a little bit of a yikes from me raiders ascendancy got a nerf uh, the rapid assault uh, got its onslaught effect removed which means um, you lose 10 percent attack speed and movement speed and um, the onslaught path blah 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 yeah and they replaced the movement speed on the small phasing nodes with elemental damage so that's another eight percent movement speed gone you kind of see a theme here they don't want you to be fast this patch so they're removing a lot of sources of um, easy movement speed. Then there's some weird spectral shield throw buffs, um, which sound interesting, but we don't really know the numbers yet, so I can't say. Um, <laughs> these mechanics have been nerfed. Fire burst was reduced in damage and has a slightly longer cooldown. Uh, just a little bit of a GGG knowledge. If they don't say, tell you how much the cooldown has been longer, um, like you, you see, they often state how much it is, uh, then it usually is very, very bad. So. <laughs> I don't even want to know what this new cooldown is, but it might just mean that Fire Burst is rest in peace. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to um, min-maxing one of these, but I don't know how this is going to survive. Uh, Hollow Palm Technique now gives 40% more attack speed down from 60%. Uh, I don't think it was necessary. Uh, the Hollow Palm builds I saw were all extremely squishy, and um, so they have a downside of using. So... I don't know why. I, I don't think it was necessary. It's very unfortunate. Uh, I thought it was a very fun playstyle. Then a Vile Ground Slam. Uh, Blade Blast got also nerfed. Um, so I was wrong on my predictions. Uh, it no longer unnerves on hit, which is really, really bad. Uh, so no longer you, do you get the 10% more damage multiplier on enemies. And the area got lowered. And instead, it only gets increased area if you have a Blade Vortex active. So I'll quickly go over these buffs to underperforming skills because, because at the end here we ha have actually a buff, which is crazy to me. Um, we will see what those skills are, so let's go through it. Firestorm got buffed. Um, I think it's not enough, but I think, as we saw, they will just buff Firestorm more and more and more incremental until it gets viable. Um, Lightning Spire Trap got buffed, which is very interesting because this used to be insane of a skill. Um, now scales with increases and reductions to trap throwing speed instead of cast speed, which is huge. Uh, Lightning Spire Trap now deals 25% more damage at all level. 
Look out for trappers. This is insane. As for se seismic trap, it got an even bigger buff. It got way more radius and 40% more damage. I'm just going to be blunt here. I've never played seismic trap. If you have, tell me in the comments down below if this is a big buff, uh, if this might be usable now. But I'm pretty hyped to maybe try it out. I don't know. Um, now... They also nerfed Flame Floor Throw a Trap, which I'm not really sure why. But, all right. Now, Shock Nova's Ring no longer deals 50% less damage. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Shock Nova might be okay now. Um, but it's just a, such a generic skill that I don't see how it could be viable. Explosive Arrow now deals 5% more damage with hits per Explosive Arrow, up from 3%. All right, I don't really think it's going to change much. Artillery... Ballista needed more than 10% more damage. I can say that because I tried this skill out. Next up, Ice Storm. This one is an interesting one. Um, this is the skill that's granted by the Whispering Ice. Unique. Now deals 3 to 5 cold damage up from 2 to 4. Uh, I don't think Ice Storm was that far away from being viable. So this might actually give it the last kick. It's very interesting. Problem with Ice Storm usually is that it's very slow. But if everything gets slowed down this patch, maybe it gets up in the ladder i don't know maybe it's a little bit more viable maybe you can make it work uh we'll have to see but um this one is an interesting change i love me some ice storms so who knows uh body swap can't comment seems like a meme uh spark now deals more base damage and has reduced growth um this goes to 10 percent more damage at gem level 20 uh so aura bots just got buffed i don't know all right sure why not uh, Barrage now deals 47% of base damage at gem level 1, blah, blah, blah. Basically, it's like 15% more damage at gem level 20, which is nice. Um, I think Barrage needed a buff because it was kind of a no-brainer for almost every bow skill to just slap a Barrage support on whatever skill you were using. But now it's probably a little bit um, more interesting than that. I don't think it will change that much with bow skills, but bow skills also got an indirect nerf by being able to use GMP easier because you're because losing out on a damage support is not as bad anymore since all the other supports got basically nerfed. So that's cool. Uh, Stormburst's base radius now increases faster with levels up to plus four instead of plus two. This is interesting. I think Stormburst with uh, how the um, meta is shaping up to be a lot slower might actually be a viable skill, which is very, very weird to say. Then we have Soul Ren's base damage has been increased up to 10% more damage at gem level 20. Um, yeah, that's all right. I don't think that's what Soul Rend really needed. I think it needs more, but for Chaos Spell Slingers, this is definitely a, a leveling buff, if anything. Um, Storm Stormcall's growth has been increased, resulting in dealing approximately 25% more damage at gem level 20. I don't know if they actually needed that, but before I say anything about Stormcall, I definitely want to know what happens to less duration support. Because with all the support gems being nerfed, less duration might be on the chopping block as well. So Stormcall might actually feel really, really bad to play. But we got to see about that. Then we have a Lightning Arrow buff, which was kind of needed. The only builds that really used Lightning Arrow were five-way farmers who had insane gear. So yeah, approximately 18% more damage. I don't know. I want to see how the new lightning um, skill performs. We're going to be talking about the all the new skill gems once the level 20 versions are out. But I'm very hyped about that one. Although it does look a little clunky. Um, but as for lightning arrow, I don't know how this is going to go yet. I think it's still worse than tornado shot, strictly speaking. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Rolling magma, um, damage growth per level, deals 20% more damage at level 20. That's fine. Uh, I kind of used it in my um, Spellslinger build, but uh, it definitely needed some help. They nerfed Discharge, which is pretty funny. Um, they made it so Frenzy Charges give 22% more cold damage, but nobody's really using Frenzy Charges because there is no super reliable way to get, get them for Discharge, to get them often and often. So um, they, <laughs> they compensated by nerfing the Power Charge Lightning damage per, uh, uh, by 5%. So... Basically, they just nerfed Discharge, which nobody was playing, which is a little funny. You, you have to you have to see that it's a little funny. Split Arrow has now an attack speed of 110% base, up from 100. Good buff. Uh, flame Blast now deals a little bit more damage. I don't think that's enough. And Vol Flame Blast also deals more damage. Probably also not enough. And that's basically it. Um, if I had to kind of uh, summarize this, uh, these patch notes is... I have no idea what's going to happen from here on out. I'm kind of a little bit scared um, and a little bit excited at the same time. Basically, 
of all the builds that I wanted to play for League Start, which were probably like 40 or 50 POBs that I made, um, probably all but two or three are unviable now or very questionable. Um, so it really is going back to the drawing board. But yeah, this is just my first reaction after looking through it. I, I read through it like two times to be sure to not miss anything. Um, tell me what you think in the comments down below for sure. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. And um, yeah, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.